Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I introduce a new set, a very small set of very small parts, uh, basically 10 of them here right at the top of the start tech for the RP2000 tech tree. Basically I noticed that in the RP2000 tech tree, at least with the part mods that I had, I ended up using a whole bunch of baby sergeants and Arabies, which is exactly how it starts out in the 1950s. And so I needed to do something to make it different for the year 2000, and that required making some new parts. So I did, and the way I did it was I went online and I searched for rocket parts that I would be able to, in theory, buy. It had a price. I just needed a price, okay? And stats, of course. But the idea is you can go online and there's a price. It's a very high price. I don't recommend getting any of these, and actually some of them are, I guess, because of COVID or one, one thing or another, uh, not being produced. Actually, one of the parts is actually a leftover from the 1960s. But instead of taking a look at here, I'm going to take a look at them in the VAB. So, uh, we do still have the Explorer core and all that stuff, Vanguard. I, I will create new cores. That's separate. Right now, I was focused on uh, fuel tanks and rocket motors, mainly rocket motors. So... As far as rocket motors go, the thing that started it off really and made it all possible was this guy. This is the S2.720. It was originally an engine for the V755 SAM missile, surface to air missile. In fact, I think this was either the same kind of missile or related to the kind of missile that shot down Gary Powers in the U2 incident in 1960. And you're going, well, that's 1960, right? I mean, there's old stuff. However, I found it on eBay. <laughs> so, the liquid propellant rocket engine, genuine functional uh, Russian Iasev, Isayev, uh, that's the bureau that made it, $7,900, uh, you can see its condition there, I, it had the bonus of really good pictures so that I could make it, and uh, yeah, look at that, huh? uh, I don't think it, it says new engine has never been used, still sealed, I guess this is a, uh, um, display article up there. Uh, still sealed, but surely functional. Surely. Uh, nitric acid amine liquid propellant engine uh, and 34.3 kilonewtons. So this is a good replacement for the Araby, right? And I looked up other stats and we have the chamber pressure here. I have the diameter and the height and everything and the weight. So basically I have all the information I need to make it happen. Uh, pictures and everything. Uh, Export the rocket engine outside the Czech Republic, okay, and yeah, actually this kind of engine, and we'll transition back to Kerbal here. Uh, it says a nitric acid and amine, but the specific kind of propellant is AK-20K and a Tonka is uh, what the propellants are. And some of you, if you've used the Vostok from Raider Nick, will recognize these. They're the same propellants, and that should make sense too, because uh, Vostok was developed at the same time and needed similar kinds of thrusters, right? Uh, basically, AK-20 is a particular kind of nitric acid blend. It's a kind of inhibited red-fuming nitric acid, and so it's got a mix of different things, including some uh, nitrogen tetroxide in. Uh, or, am I getting that wrong? I think maybe is it AK-20 or Tonka? Anyway, one of them is like that and the other is uh, is another thing. Anyway, so that is our mixture and that is, it said 32.3 uh, kilonewton sea level on our site. So I assume that, so that's our sea level thrust and vacuum ends up being 39 uh, based on a 266 vacuum ISP. One ignition, I didn't think that it had an extra ignition. And I gave it a vectoring range because it be at the top of the SAM missile. I I don't know how they were going to control that. You know, surface to air missiles do need to be controlled somehow. Either they are going to do that by fins, it's possible, or they're going to do that by gimbling the engine. I gave it gimbal. Uh, so even though it doesn't have the gimbal frame on it or anything like that. But there you go. Uh, the S2.720. And now to complement this, we needed some things to replace the Baby Sergeant because this is basically the replacement for the Air B Sustainer. And for those who aren't familiar with the Air B Sustainer, it is um, basically this little guy here. This is a similar thing. This is where Aerojet got its start. Um, 
This is uh, upgraded ARB sustainer aniline, uh, inhibited red fuming nitric acid, basically the same stuff that's up there, and preferral, but that tripropellant thing, gets 228 vacuum ISP and uh, 20 kilonewtons ish. It can be upgraded a little bit, but not much. So that's the ARB sustainer. So this is overall a better engine. And actually, if we take a look at the plumbing, it's sort of pretty obvious that it ought to be a better engine. Uh, it is it is a more complicated engine to be sure. Now, we have a price for it, right? Uh, the price is $7,900. And by my RP2000 convention, uh, for year $2020, it's one fund per $1,000. So $7,900 is 7.9, simple as that. Uh, we have these other rocket motors meant to take the place of the baby sergeants, which are basically these up here. I think the baby sergeants are one step up in the tech tree. Anyway, so where I got these from... Uh, was starting with this Aerotech motor website. I went with the largest ones that they had. They had a comparison table here and a price. These are cheapy ones down here, but uh, at the bottom, uh, this one sold out. Uh, actually, that is, uh, no, the L1090W is one that I included. What I was going for was ones with decent burn time and also total impulse. And so this one had the highest total impulse, so that attracted me. And so I made a model of this. It has the diameter, the length, and also this is the dry mass. And I think this is the propellant mass. Yeah, that's the propellant mass. So it's fairly light. It's only two kilograms. And so I was looking for stuff that's a little bit bigger, though. I, I included this K480W as well. So those are in. But looking for larger solid rocket motors, these are basically model rocket motors, except you need a special license. This is a level two license. I wanted something with a level three license from the FAA. And so I hit upon this. Cesaroni website, uh, and I went with the biggest, of course. Uh, we have the O8000 here, and that has a maximum thrust of over 8 kilonewtons, 224 second ISP, 5 second burn time. So it's basically a baby sergeant. It's basically a baby sergeant. So I, I put one of these in, and I got a few of the others that they have available. They don't have pictures, though, but you can see the price, $4,900. Real life, this is, you know, serious stuff. Uh, as far as Kerbal, though, it ends up as 4.9, so that's convenient. Some of these other ends I included. Anyway, we'll take a look at in the VAB. Uh, somebody had mentioned this Gorilla Rocket Motors, and they have some that are fairly big, bigger than the ones on the Cesaroni one. Uh, for instance, uh, this one has a mass total weight of 33 kilograms here. Uh, it doesn't provide as much thrust, but it provide, provides it for longer. It's 6.7 seconds. This is 9 seconds burn time. So those are bigger, but I didn't have much... Well, first of all, no price for those. We have a thrust curve, but no price. I did put thrust curves on. They're not exactly accurate for these little SRBs, but... Um, you're not going to notice very much because they burn out so quickly, so you're not going to be like, hmm, the thrust curve is wrong. Uh, anyway, but the fact that it says new website launching soon, and from all I could tell, it's been that way for about two years, three years maybe, uh, I think it was 2017, more than three years. I don't know about this. They need to update their website before I have faith in them. Anyway, now, the downside to the Cesaroni one was that uh, they said they were sold out, so maybe there was supply issues because of the pandemic and everything. Aerotech seems to have theirs available. Okay, but that's enough looking at the websites for these engines. So, we have the 08000, that's that size. I have no idea what it looks like, I just did artistic license on these. Uh, there's a 025000, but it doesn't burn for very long. You can see it's thinner. And, um, but it has 29 kilonewtons. So it's sort of a booster, but it's not quite as good as the 08000, which lasts longer and uh, gets a peak of 10 kilonewtons. This one has 8 kilonewtons, uh, about 3 kilonewtons, 4 kilonewtons, 2.4. As you can see, there's less than 1 kilonewton. 
And I just went by the length and diameter they said on their site, so whatever it was, it was. This one seems longish for one of these small rocket motors, but hey. Um, so this one is the L1090W that we saw there, and it's got a peak of 1.334 kilonewtons. Uh, 204. I was also looking at the ISP. I didn't want stuff that was too crappy in the ISP, but the only uh, one that was really low is this one. But that's because it's got very low thrust and that it's it's a cute little thing. Anyway, so that's the K480W. So we've got all these solid rocket motors, and the thing is, we want to do stuff with them. And I'll make new probe cores later, but basically we've got the Explorer 1. And when you start, you'll have something like the Explorer 1. Or, you know, you could put Vanguard in a fairing. I'll try and get procedural fairings available at the start. But uh, uh, Vanguard's spikiness doesn't really help. So maybe Vanguard 2 is... well, it's bulkier still. Explorer 1 is probably your best bet, no matter what. Then I'll make some sort of new probe core that has roughly the same form factor. And, uh, of course, you don't need to use RP2000 with any of this, so you can just play around. I I'm going to link the parts in the video description. It's going to be in the small rockets pack, so the zip will also include the launcher space rocket 1. Okay, so these are added into that pack. And so when you download the zip, you'll get that too. But, uh, yeah, so this is probably a little bit too small for this particular purpose, unless you want to cluster them. Right, uh, some uh, ignore the burn time in MechJeb. It's wrong. It's uh, not understanding the thrust curve very well. So you could do something like that. I mean, okay. Well, now that I've done it, <laughs> now that I've done it, here we are. I'll I'll have to put the procedural decouplers in. Otherwise, all we have is uh, Arabic stuff. So. You know what, uh, why don't I restart the game? I'm gonna put procedural decouplers right at the start of the tech tree so that we don't have to have this problem. Okay, I think I've fixed the decoupler problem, but we've got a strange quirk in that it isn't going down to the diameter. I set it to a minimum diameter of 0.15, or was it 0 0.125, 0 0.125. It seems to be able to go lower than that, but I didn't mean for that to happen. So I think something might be messed up and I'm worried. Uh, we can't auto strut these L1090W rocket motors. I've put them in a cluster of seven, like I said. When attaching these, keep in mind that the attachment node is at the top. Uh, so if you just want to radial attach, that's a little bit complicated, unfortunately, because otherwise, you know, it wants to go like that. So that's a downside. Now, there's no side attachment node as I don't think there would be for these rocket motors, I'm not sure, but... Uh, so, we've sized them to the minimal length on the decouplers. Keep in mind that the decouplers have a force of their own, so they're gonna contribute delta V. Uh, the thing is that there's no incentive to reduce the impulse that they provide because they're the same mass either way. So, you're going to just lose some delta V by uh, reducing... Uh, and it's delta V that doesn't show up right here. But on a normal rocket, it wouldn't matter. On a really small rocket, it does. So, yeah, that is a consideration. And we've got two O8000s because they fit basically the same diameter as the Explorer 1. And then finally, an O25000 down here, which is, it provides a lot of thrust, but not for very long. The burn times here are not correct. I think they're multiplying by... Mm, but a little bit more than four because this one will last 1.3 seconds and so it's not reading the thrust uh, curve quite right and so that's something to keep in mind we have fins on for spin stabilization so there's a fairly typical sounding rocket four stages and we're trying to get to space with it that's all so let's see all right so there it is tiny tiny rocket I've already tested these out during a test stream of RP2000 a couple of days ago, so they work. Uh, I'm nervous about the decoupler situation. Also about the 7 on that stage, I haven't done that before. Okay, ignition. Now, one thing I learned is don't immediately stage 
let it coast a little bit because otherwise it, it gets a lot of drag if we go very fast so we'll stage here now okay good see i mean it, it, the the drag will just be too much if we stage immediately let it coast a while you can see the apoapsis down there so once it gets closer to apoapsis we'll stage again And that's the other stage crashing. Okay, but we don't want it to start wobbling a whole lot because it's going too slow, right? It's been stabilized. We have to keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're going up to four, well, a little bit less than 40 kilometers. We're getting more drag here. And then we'll have the final stage. Spin stabilization is good. So I look forward to uh, developing more tiny payloads. With our monitor tech, okay, it's uh, precessing a little bit, so let's go. I don't like that wobble. Okay, so now it reached a peak of 112, but it's getting more drag, so we'll see where we end up. That's not going to be space for real solar system. But let's see if we can get to space with, uh, with, with the 100 kilometer definition. So yeah, I'll develop some new payloads based on like Arduinos and some other technology that might be likely for sounding rockets today. Okay, we reached 100 kilometers. So we didn't quite reach space, but I'll give you the parts and maybe you'll figure out how to do that properly. No, we didn't necessarily use the best combination of things. For now, I will abandon this. Okay, well... We want a slightly more efficient thing to go with if we want to get to orbit. We probably not got spin stabilized because we will have that uh, liquid engine first stage which has gimbling. So let's just take this off for now. And what I'll replace it with is this M3400 I think because it's got a very good vacuum ISP. Um, it said 229 uh, seconds ISP on average basically. So that's the best I saw. I think we'll still go with the 08000 here. Okay, but we have limited liquid fuel tanks. I'll have to bring the procedural fuel tanks to start later as well. For now, we have the error B. Uh, uh, once we bring the procedural fuel tank stages to start, of course, with limited diameters, this will be better. But for now, we'll do this. And can we just put the S2 engine like that and replace the propellants in here, of course. Well, that's not enough to get to orbit. It's a cute sounding rocket. But definitely not enough to get to orbit. We may need a cluster of them. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratios, so really, we could have a bigger tank. We don't really have RCS thrusters. Well, by the time you uh, do a rocket like this, you'll probably get to basic rocketry, which will get the RCS thrusters and stuff like that. So there'll be more parts available, but uh, as long as you do that first launch with the initial alpha and get some science from the Explorer core or the equivalent, then you should be able to unlock basic rocketry and get further parts. I have not done that yet. So anyway, uh, we will test this engine and see how high we get with this setup. Okay, we probably should ignite the engine first and then release the launch clamp. Put all up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. I think I had moved the plume down in some configuration, but I failed to do it uh, in the version in the install folder. So... This engine does not throttle, <laughs> so... Ah, uh, okay, we're gonna need fins and spin stabilization. So we're going to add an extra upper stage made out of a cluster of 08000s. Maybe we should uh, have a cluster, let's see. Um, maybe a cluster of M3400s will be fine. 
Because again, it's got the better vacuum specific impulse and everything. Let's put nine. Uh, let's put this stage on first, otherwise. It's gotta be hard to put it on correctly. It still seems like a pretty high thrust weight ratio. Um, hold on. Uh, the, oh, those are being used up too early. That's still a lot of thrust weight ratio. Can we radially attach the Araby tanks? Well, we're gonna have to do something awkward. But we don't have any nose cones. Eh, okay, fine, we'll take our chances without that mess. Okay, I fixed the plume uh, using the editor in there, so the plume should be set to where it is in the file that I'm going to link in the video description for this engine. So, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. That's worse. I would need to reverse that, maybe. <laughs> okay, I went in the wrong direction. Okay, so we're trying to spin stabilize here. Yeah, very good. Nice liquid stage there, though you might want it a little bit heavier. And then we've got a bunch of solid stages. So same principle, just light them when there's limited drag, but before it starts precessing and wobbling. So I think it's okay to go now. Go. And go. Not quite a thousand kilometers, but pretty close. So anyway, uh, didn't do the orbital version, but uh, well, that will be a possibility. I tried it during the RP2000 test streams and I managed to do it, but we'll need the procedural tanks for that. Uh, so, I don't know, there are these little haphazardly made, quickly made sort of uh, off-the-shelf parts, if you will, that can serve as your new type baby sergeants and Arabies. And I don't know if they'll be of any use. Maybe people are interested in this sort of thing, maybe not. If you do have links to perhaps other off-the-shelf equipment that might be of interest to include, uh, you can tell me in the comments below. Uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.